Competitive Monotype Pokemon is a format where all your Pokemon have to share the same type. For example, if you pick the Water type, you can use Pokemon like Gyarados or Swampert. The format is about being creative in your team building to find ways to fight against bad type matchups while also doing well in neutral and positive type matchups. For example, Mono Ground types like to use the move Gravity as a way to beat Mono Flying type teams. You're only limited by what you can come up with. That being said, however, some types are better than others. For example, it probably wouldn't surprise you to know that Mono Water is a better type overall than Mono Grass. The two main factors in determining whether a type is good or not are its inherent properties like weaknesses and immunities, but also the Pokemon available. A type could theoretically be the best type ever, but it means nothing if all the Pokemon that have that type are bad. In a previous video, we looked at the top 5 monotypes in competitive Pokemon, but this time we're going to look at the bottom 5 types in competitive monotype Pokemon in Generation 8. Also, make sure to subscribe. It's free and doesn't cost you anything. Let me know what other top 5s you want to see down in the comments below. At number 5, we have the Grass type. Grass is a balanced type neither extremely offensive or defensive, but unfortunately, the typing has some inherent disadvantages. Defensively, Grass has 5 weaknesses in total, and offensively, it's not the best either. Rillaboom is a powerful offensive threat with grassy terrain, and Bulk of Zarude can be threatening versus types like Psychic. Ferrothorn is also a top defensive Pokemon, but other than that, Grass is stretched too thin with average Pokemon on a below average type. Whimsicott can help versus Mono Dragon, Cradilly can help versus Mono Flying and Mono Fire, but these can get overwhelmed. The Grass type is so heavily dependent on holding on with individual Pokemon versus bad type matchups, and the Pokemon that they need are not very good overall. Cradilly is a good example. You need it to be able to play against the Flying and Fire type Pokemon, but it's not an incredibly useful Pokemon overall. It's only on the team because it has to be there, otherwise you would have no chance. It's an issue of trying to do the impossible and covering that many weaknesses, and the overall quality of Pokemon on the team is lower. On top of that, there are some matchups that are just plain unwinnable. For example, versus Mono Poison, offensively, Grass can never break through Amoongus plus Toxapex. Defensively, they can't outlive them either. Strong Regenerator Pokemon plus the immunity to Toxic means Poison can always outlive a Grass-type team. For all its demerits, the grass type does indeed have a good matchup versus ground and water. In a tournament setting, if you're predicting your opponent to use either water or ground, you can try to pick this type to beat them. In that regard, it's not completely terrible, like other types that are further down the list. At number 4 we have the bug type. Bug is a bad defensive and offensive type. Bug doesn't have many good defensive Pokemon either. However, Bug has some Pokemon that are individually good offensively. Volcarona is a threatening Quiver Dance Sweeper, and there are other powerful threats like Scizor and Buzzwool. Bug teams entirely abandon the hope of playing defense. It's not possible with all the weaknesses and lack of good defensive Pokemon. Fire and Flying are common coverage types. Instead, Bug goes for an all-out attack with Sticky Web. Once upon a time, Bug was more threatening when it had Pokemon like Mega Pinsor or Mega Scizor and access to Z-moves. It was average to below average then too, but now it's worse than that. There's just a lack of offensive synergy overall. Bug has Volcarona and Buzzwall okay, but then what happens after that? How does it work together? This can be contrasted to Mono Electric, which is considered one of the best pure offensive types. Electric teams use Electric Terrain and very clearly focus on removing ground types and spamming powerful fast attacks with Pokemon like Surge Surfer, Alolan Raichu with Rising Voltage. Bug doesn't really have any defined focus like that. Bug has Sticky Web, but in Generation 8, Heavy Duty Boots make it not as meaningful. Bug is not a full team of powerful Pokemon. It's a few good offensive Pokemon who don't necessarily synergize well with each other. Offensively, Bug isn't horrible, but you would rather use other attacking types who have more collective synergy and don't have as many type weaknesses. It's a bad typing, and the Pokemon available make it very one-dimensional, and it's not exceptional at that one dimension. Also, as a note, Electric basically has an unlosable matchup versus Bug. Bug doesn't have a good ground-type Pokemon, which means there's nothing to stop fast, powerful, electric terrain Pokemon. Electric is simply stronger and faster than anything Bug can do. At number 3, we have the Normal type, which wasn't actually that bad until Generation 8. In Gen 7, Normal had Scrappy Mega Lopunny, 
V conversion Porygon Z, which is one of the best Z move Pokemon, Intimidate Star Raptor, and the moves Return and Frustration, which don't exist in Generation 8. Normal took a big blow when it lost that many important resources all at once. Offensively, Normal doesn't have a lot going for it, especially with the loss of Return. Beware and Diggersby are now the main offensive Pokemon, but Diggersby has to use Body Slam to attack, which is considerably weaker than Return. Heliolus can be okay versus Water, and Ditto can copy Pokemon, but overall Normal isn't threatening offensively. Instead, Normal is more of a defensive type. It only has one weakness, the fighting type, and has good defensive Pokemon. Blissey beats almost every special attacker, and Eviolite Porygon 2 and Fluffy Beware can handle physical attackers. The problem with Normal is that while its offenses are too weak, its defenses are too passive in practice. Versus other defensively oriented teams, you simply lose in the long run. For example, Mono Poison's Regenerator Core has infinite longevity, so it would always win in a defense versus defense matchup. Offensive teams can brute force through Mono Normal. It's a bit of a nuanced understanding, but because extremely defensive Pokemon like Blizzy don't do a lot of damage in return, they can turn into sitting ducks. They can become helpless versus an offensive team that can attack again and again over and over. Hazards like Stealth Rock, moves like Knock Off, moves like Volt Switch, even raw power from Pokemon like Tapu Lele can eventually run through an ultra defensive team. This is different from stall teams you might see in standard play. Other than the type diversity, standard play stall also has a lot of Pokemon that are individually elite. Even if they are a team full of sitting ducks, these stall teams back themselves to cover every weakness with the six of them. The difference here is that Normal doesn't have six elite defensive Pokemon. It only has Blissey and P2, and there's a large reliance on them to hold on, which isn't realistic. Normal is an alright typing, but it's let down by the lack of good Pokemon in Generation 8. At number 2 we have Fighting. I've covered Fighting in detail in my other video where I talk about how Fighting used to be a top type but is now terrible. Briefly, Fighting started to struggle once there were a lot of good fairy type Pokemon and Fighting didn't keep up in the arms race. Fighting can't really cover its weaknesses at all and you end up having a miserable time trying to play it. Fighting has a below average typing and while it has good Pokemon, it doesn't have the right Pokemon to solve its problems. Again. Watch the full fighting type video for more details. Finally, at number 1, we have the Rock type. Rock is legendary for the number of weaknesses it has, especially because it's a common types like ground and water. Rock's Pokemon aren't even that bad in a vacuum. There's stuff like Tyranitar and Terrakion. The problem is that every team has coverage moves to hit the Rock type. Fire has High Jump Kick, Cinderace, Bug has Buzzwool, even Flying has a good matchup with Pokemon like Landorus T and Skarmory or Corviknight. There's essentially no way to cover all the weaknesses and Rock doesn't do anything exceptional either. There's no large payoff for trying to solve its problems. Rock has a few Shell Smash Pokemon, but that's about it. It's a truly awful type in a monotype context, and it doesn't have enough elite Pokemon or options to make it worth using. Honorable mention goes to the Ice type, which is well known for being a bad defensive type. But Generation 8 gave it so many good resources that it's not bad anymore. Kyurem got Freeze Dry to hit Water type Pokemon, Weavile got the powerful Triple Axel, and Slush Rush, Bolt Beak, Arctazolt, and Galarian Darmanitan are great additions too. It's not an elite type, but it's still good enough to be used and has some deadly matchups with its speed and power. If this video was made in Gen 7, Ice probably would have made the list. Thank you for watching and let me know what types you think belong in the bottom 5.